when will drones be delivering our parcels? But actually, I think the question goes a bit deeper than that. I think it's more, where is this utopic future? It seems that we were promised five or 10 years ago, where you order something online, and 15 minutes later, a drone delivers it to your door. Well, to help answer that question, I want to start with a story. This story starts just over a year ago now. I was standing in front of a crowd of people. With witnesses to my left and timekeepers to my right, I was standing there to realize a dream. My childhood dream to break a world record. And on that day, on my third attempt, I broke the world record for the most flips by a drone in one minute. And I broke it by threefold, a feat that would not have been possible just 10 years earlier. So what's changed in the last 10 years that's allowed some kid in his bedroom with some spare time, a passion for engineering and an interest in drones to build such a high performance machine from component parts? A drone that can fly at more than 100 miles an hour, can flip at three times a second, and has an acceleration of 0 to 100 in less than a second. Well, I think this is made possible by two factors. The first is that the parts needed to build drones like these have become a lot more accessible. As in, I can now cheaply buy the same components and underlying technology the military and top defense companies were developing just 20 years ago. And the second is that there's a large open source community driving the development of the complex flight software required to stabilize a drone mid-flight. And this is amended to by thousands of engineers and hobbyists from across the globe. So I think this begs the question, if this technology is so accessible, why aren't we seeing drones delivering our parcels today? Well, unfortunately, in the UK, a major factor is government regulation. The current UK air law says you cannot fly a drone out of line of sight, as in past where you can see it. And so you can see how this would be a major block to drone delivery companies. But what about countries with less strict air law? Countries where these companies can exist, and they do. For that, we turn to third world countries such as Kenya and Rwanda. I want to start by talking about a company called Zipline. One of many startups testing their drone delivery systems in these countries. Zipline deliver urgent medical supplies to the hardest to reach hospitals on the planet. Hospitals that would take hours, even days to reach by car, can be accessed in a fraction of that time using these long range delivery drones. In fact, using just two drone launch stations, Zipline is able to cover the entire country of Rwanda. These isolated hospitals are getting 15 deliveries an hour. This has decreased the maternal mortality rate by 80%. And the amazing thing is, this isn't some charity or government-funded scheme saving lives. Zipline is a profitable business. As of today, worth 4.2 billion US dollars. I think that's testament to just how much good this technology can bring. And Zipline and many companies like them are simply perfecting the technology needed to allow these drone delivery systems to exist. So that when the time comes, and the UK government regulation makes it more accessible, these companies will be ready. So what is the British government doing to bring this dream of drone delivery to fruition? Well, one major project designed to accelerate the large-scale adoption of delivery drones in the UK is the drone superhighway. Essentially, it's a strip of airspace where these autonomous drones can fly out of line of sight. It's a corridor where these companies can exist. The drone superhighway is set to be finished by May 2024 and will allow the transportation of urgent medical supplies and high value, low volume goods between hospitals and distribution centers across the country. But the really amazing thing that's setting this apart from the rest of the world is the technology sitting on the ground. The corridor has these beacons with powerful sensors looking up to the sky. These sensors create a map of the airspace above and this is sent to the drones in real time, creating a virtual air traffic controller. This means if a bird, stray power glider or private pilot flies through the superhighway, the beacons will detect it, and in real time, the drones will edit their flight plan to avoid a collision. Not only does this increase safety, it decreases the barriers to entry into this market. Because the expensive part about building a delivery drone is the array of sensors and complex flight software needed to make it safe. I mean, this was shown by my crude record drone. I didn't need these sensors because I was controlling it manually, and as a result, it was relatively cheap to build. So the fact that these sensors can be ground-based and the route planning software can be found in the cloud, significantly increases the accessibility to the drone superhighway, and therefore, I believe, will foster larger scale adoption. Drones can enter and leave the superhighway anywhere along it, and as it expands, we'll be able to reach more and more of the nation. 
There are also companies trialing and testing drones for everyday use in other countries, such as Wing, who have completed 350,000 drone deliveries in the US. From local shops, businesses, and supermarkets, the idea is that any business can take a few unused parking spaces and transform it into a drone delivery depot and start delivering through the skies. And this is actually happening. The use cases here are profound. Imagine you're on a call with your doctor. He prescribes you some medication, and by the time the call finishes, a drone delivers it to your door. Or you order some food, and two minutes later, a drone drops it off in your garden. In light of this, I took my own project, a project to build a delivery drone, a mock-up, a proof of concept that this technology really is here, and it's here to stay. And to do that, I built this. Again, from Hobby Components, this is about as large of a drone as you can build with off-the-shelf parts. 10-inch propellers. And after much tuning and testing, I was able to get it to hover. And after installing the GPS onto that very same drone, I was able to get it to fly completely autonomously. The idea is that I put it down in a field, tell it points on a map I want it to fly to, and the drone will fly to these points and land by itself. I still have a controller and a live video stream if something goes wrong, but my hands aren't on the controller, and this drone is landing completely autonomously. And then I disarm it. And so that was amazing to me. This is what some kid can achieve. Who knows what tech companies investing millions in this technology will be able to do. And while my drone utilized four upwards facing propellers, more advanced delivery drones use a wing system, which allows them to fly longer distances and maximize efficiency. Another difference is that my modern delivery drones deliver their parcels via cord while staying high above. This decreases the noise, but also increases safety, because the customer is nowhere near the spinning propellers. And talking about safety, modern delivery drones have some crazy safety features. We're talking about drones that can fly with one propeller completely broken. Backup power systems, navigation systems, and if all else fails, they can deploy a parachute. And this is why, in the six years Zipplan have been operating, and a combined 40 million flight miles, they have never had an incident causing injury. And what I love about this technology is just how far it can stretch. It's got the ability to impact our lives in so many more ways than delivering parcels. Another tech at the forefront of this drone revolution include hail drones, high altitude, long endurance. The idea is that these drones can generate their own power as they fly using solar panels on the wings. This allows them to fly for months at a time and do things like transmit internet connection to isolated areas or take measurements and weather forecasting for more accurate, for more, more accurate weather, uh, weather forecasting. And of course, let's not forget the zenith of drone technology, using drones to transport people. While the innovation and legislation may still be far off, there are companies building prototypes in the race to create a flying car. And so from microscopic intelligence gathering drones, to truck-sized airships transporting cargo across the Atlantic, and from lightning-fast search and rescue drones to slow and methodical agricultural ones. This technology truly is poised to impact our lives in ways we can barely imagine. Drawing on my own endeavours into this field, through countless hours spent building, testing and flying an array of drones, as well as research into the cutting-edge technology leading this industry, I truly believe we are just scratching the surface of what's possible. So to answer my original question, when will drones be delivering our parcels? I believe within two years, we will see a more prevalent use of the drone superhighway. And within five years, I believe it will be commonplace to see drones delivering parcels to your door. And so as we envision a future where drones seamlessly deliver our parcels, let me leave you with this one final message. What other boundaries can we push? What other frontiers can we explore when we leverage this technology, not only for our convenience, but as a force for good? Thank you.